Hello everyone, welcome to another time-lapse tutorial. This video is the condensed version of the full-length tutorial I have made for my patrons. So if you want to watch the full-length tutorial, you can support me on Patreon. The link is in the video description below. So for this tutorial, I will be sketching this building that looks like a castle. This place is called New Market and it's located in Amsterdam. The reference photo can be downloaded from the video description below. So I started this sketch by using my pencil to block out the general shape of the building to make sure that I can fit the whole building onto a single page. Now notice that the pencil lines, they are just rectangles. Once I have blocked out the general shape with the rectangles, I know I will be able to fit the building into those rectangles and the rectangles are actually divided into smaller rectangles to basically help me with the proportion and the positioning of elements of the building such as where the spirals are, where the triangles are are they to the left side of the rectangle, to the right side or somewhere in the middle so those guidelines, those pencil guidelines, they help me position those elements I wasn't able to draw this on location because I did not have enough time which is why I'm drawing this now at home with the help of the reference photo and what I like about this building is the shapes so if you take a look at the building there are a lot of triangles and the triangles they overlap one another which is fantastic because this will create a sense of depth with this sketch I draw from left to right and each time I draw a new triangle or the roof, I would base the position of the new triangle or roof based on the location, based on the lines that I have already drawn. So when I draw a certain point, I will always think to myself, is this point higher, lower, or where is it compared to the diagonal line that I have just drawn? Where is it compared to the top of the roof that I have just drawn? So when it comes to drawing, it really is about positioning. How accurate you can be really comes down to how keenly you are observing the subject. So if you spend a lot more time looking at the subject than looking at your paper, you're going to have a more accurate drawing. So usually for me, when I'm drawing, I try to spend a lot more time looking at my subject and then look at my paper just to check to see uh, if I have drawn the correct proportion and I would measure a lot. Once I have drawn the big shapes, I can then fill in the little shapes and also I can add little details to the big shapes to the building that I have already drawn. Now most of the details in the background are drawn with lighter lines. I'm using a Pelican M200 fountain pen. So for drawing lighter lines, I would apply less pressure or I would turn the fountain pen around to draw with the reverse side of the nib. This photograph was taken with a camera while I was standing. So the eye level, my eye level is at the same eye level as all the people in the scene. So if you draw a horizontal line across all the eyes of all the people in the scene, all the eyes will fall on the same horizon line. If I have taken this photograph while I was squatting, my eye level will be at the waist level of, the, of all the people in the scene. So the eye level is very important. If you want to add other people in the scene, you have to make use of the eye level. So in this case, if I want to add more people, more crowd into the scenes, I would add people where the eyes would fall on the eye level, on the horizon line. So for the watercolor section, I basically wet the paper first. I use too much water, which is why the water flowed off the paper. So to pick up excess water, you can prepare some dry tissue and dry your brush and go onto the paper to pick up, to absorb the extra water. So after painting the sky, I'm painting the yellows, painting the trees. I wanted to paint yellow like this because I want to have the colors mixed on paper. So I have yellow first and then I add in the blue. 
Um, unfortunately, I cannot remember which blue I used. Actually, it doesn't really matter which uh, which primary colors you use as long as they are primary colors. So for the front of the building, again, I try to have the colors mixed on the paper. So I don't mix them completely in the palette. I added yellow onto the paper and then I added some red and then some blue and I try to mix the paint around by using the brush to push the paint around. I wanted to create, sorry, I wanted to mix the colors wet on wet because when you look at bricks, they usually have colors that vary here and there. So it's good to have some color blending for the brick walls. For the roofs, the colors they look rather flat. So for the roofs, I have the colors mixed more completely on the palette and apply them onto the roofs. So when you look at the bricks, you can see color variation. When you look at the roofs, the colors are flat. So this contrast will create some variation as well. It makes the watercolor work look more interesting rather than have a flat wash for everything which sometimes may look a bit more cartoony a bit more flat a bit more uh, too stylized i would say for the shadows it's a mix of the three primary colors i try to make the shadows darker because when you take a look at the photo while well, the shadows they are close to black it was a very sunny day, so I wanted the shadows to be really dark. And when you have dark shadows, it creates a good contrast against the lighted area. And shadows will help create illusion of depth. Having good shadows is crucial to creating the illusion of form. So now, after coloring the big shapes, after painting the sky, the trees, and the walls of the building, now I am adding little details on top of the initial wash. Here I'm using white wash to paint the white lines of the roofs. I find that painting using white gouache and using the white gel pen later on, uh, compared to using masking fluid, this is a more convenient way of getting back the highlights. So at this point, this sketch is almost complete. I'm just using the white gel pen to add the details, drawing the window frames. And when you take a look at the wall, you can see the blending of colors. It looks really nice, rather than the flat wash of the rooftops, which was painted flat intentionally. If you want to check out more sketching tutorials, you can visit the YouTube playlist on my channel. The link is in the video description below. And if you want to check out the full length tutorials, the tutorials at normal speed where I talk in depth about the techniques, the colors, the exact colors that I use, you can support me on Patreon. I currently have maybe over 100 full length tutorials on my Patreon page. Patreon, by the way, is a monthly subscription service where you can pledge a certain dollar amount to support the artist that you like. Your support is what enables me to create the huge variety of videos you see on my YouTube channel. So to support me, just visit my Patreon page. The link is in the video description below. And if you have any questions regarding this tutorial, let me know in the comments section. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.